This is one of our salmon pink tarantulas, the scientific name of Lassiodora parahibana. Larger enclosure, and that's because it's a larger spider. So this is a female. We think she's about 20 years old. Um, she came into the collection being approximately 10 years old when we formed Venom Tech back in 2010. Typically she would deliver about 70 microliters, so about 7 hundredths of a, uh, a milliliter uh, in any one Venom collection. And she's uh, shed her skin relatively recently, so she's got a wonderful dark color and those red, what we call guard hairs, being very evident of a sort of fluffy appearance. So there's often a good question about how do we know if a spider is uh, content and happy. For terrestrial spiders, that is the provision of uh, hide and good substrate. For arboreal spiders, we provide them with um, leaves as well as the hide, because a good three-dimensional structure is important for these spiders. For a terrestrial spider, sitting like this with the legs uh, in a sort of star shape is a relaxed posture. When they're aggressive, they're either rearing up their front legs or kicking hairs from their back legs. This is an Indian ornamental spider, Poselotheria regalis, it's its scientific name. And here it is an, an arboreal species from India. And if we lift the lid, you can see on the left of the hide, she's chosen to sit in that relaxed of postures. And she's not gonna move, there we are. She was in a relaxed posture. Now she's gone back in the house. What I'm gonna take out here is a, a fascinating species called the horned baboon spider. So all spiders produce silk, but uh, theraphosids and tarantulas don't produce it as a, a capture web, they use it just for their home enclosure. And here we have a horned baboon spider, and you can spot there's a horn on the top of the, what we call the carapace of the head there. Most of our animals came from the captive bred pet trade and pet wholesalers. We also rehome animals from zoological collections, we breed some species ourselves, so true spiders like the black widows and brown recluse spiders, we breed because they only have a short lifespan, about 18 months. Uh, Theraphosids and tarantulas like these uh, horned baboons have a much longer lifespan, up to 40 years, uh, and therefore th there is no need to, to breed them. It also takes a long time for the babies to uh, mature to be large enough to collect venom from. This, this is the king baboon spiders. They were named baboon spiders because the early taxonomists thought that they, their legs looked like the fingers of baboons. But I think that's open to a lot of interpretation. Here you can see the spider sitting at the entrance of his burrow. And again, same setup with the vermiculite providing humidity for this species that's native to um, East Africa. The theraphosids are ambush hunters. So they spend a lot of time waiting in the hide, waiting for food to come past. What we have here is our collection of large Asian scorpions, the Asian forest scorpions. Um, we have in a really useful boxes. And we use these because they are secure, the clipped. We can control the humidity, as you can see the condensation here, uh, and the air holes down the sides. They have a vermiculite substrate. This is uh, essentially sterile, so it doesn't support any microbial growth. Um, a hide and a water bowl, and the whole unit is fully autoclavable. We use secondary containment, so when we open an animal enclosure, there's a secondary barrier, just in case it's feeling sprightly one morning. Underneath the hide, you'll see our Asian forest scorpion. The Asian forest scorpions, much like many of the forest scorpions that we have here require high humidity. They're from a rainforest environment. So the vermiculite absorbs water, so this is the substrate on the bottom here, uh, absorbs water and keeps a humid atmosphere. Scorpions are um, predatory and they feed on other arthropods. Uh, in the lab environment we feed them with um, desert locusts. This is because they are bred in captivity for um, pet food and zoological food. It's a clean, relatively clean culture. These animals we are feeding about once a month. When we're ready to collect the venom, the venom is stored in the gland at the end. So this is the, the telson, and this is the only part of the scorpion that's actually a tail. This section is actually abdomen, um, but is often referred to wrongly as a tail. 
and the aculus, as we call it, the stinger on the end, is where the venom would come from. We gently anaesthetize the animals with a rising concentration of CO2, so carbon dioxide, and then we can, by using a very gentle electrical stimulation, can cause the muscle of the venom gland to contract and the venom to come out. In this cabinet here behind glass, we have the scorpions that are listed under the Dangerous Wild Animals Act, um, and we are licensed to keep under that act. Um, they include the uh, wonderful common names like the Death Stalker and the African Fattail, uh, whose genus Androctonus actually translates to man killer. And that's what we've got here uh, in this group. What I'm going to do is actually, we'll take one of these out into the secondary containment and you can have a look. There's a very different um, colour and body plan to this particular scorpion. I'm actually going to get out the death stalker because she's on the top. So here we have the death stalker scorpion, Lyris quinquestriatus, and as the common name suggests, uh, they are of um, significant med medical concern for humans. Uh, that's another reason why we are hands off with all our animals. You see we're using a 30 centimeter forceps, and we use them whether the animals are dangerous or not, and it stops us making mistakes. You'll see the different coloration of this scorpion relates to its desert habitat. Uh, whereas the Asian forest scorpion is dark with a rainforest background, this one is yellow to match the sand uh, of the desert. A much smaller animal, more importantly you'll also see they've got very small claws. Scorpions with small claws, it's usually an indication that they have a, a, a more powerful, more toxic venom. From evolutionary point of view, they only need one weapon or the other. It um, uses too much energy to have a high power venom and really muscular claws, so you'll see one or the other.